Oh, fuck. Are we rolling? Oh, shit. <coughs> 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 oh, mm. Mm. How do I look? Yeah, fucking awful. <coughs> <coughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another video. And in this video, we're going to actually be talking about the Blu-rays. Yes, a Blu-ray update without me, with me, talking. Oh, lucky for you. Oh, yes. So yeah, we're going to be talking about... One, two, three, eight, eight films. And the first film we're going to be talking about is the 1975 classic, Dog Day Afternoon. Oh, just, what can we say about this film? It's just classic, classic 1970s Pacino. Just Pacino in the 70s. Just, just a fucking man, I tell you. Godfather, Godfather Part Two, Serpico, uh, Bobby Deerfield, uh, and Justice for All. Just classic, just classic films. And this, it's oh, it's an absolute classic. Just absolute classic. And you haven't, and if you haven't seen it, and you don't know what it's about, basically, it's based on a true story. Basically, it's, I don't know, I don't know what year it was, I think it was the early set, the early about, uh, about 72, 73, a bank robber goes into a bank to rob it to pay for his boyfriend's sex operation. I know, it's, I know you're thinking, yeah, it's a true, it's a true story. I mean, back then, sex operations were just not, they were just not, just, just didn't happen. I mean, the only person I can think of back in the early 70s that had a sex operation is um, Walter Carlos, the, the composer, the composed Clockwork Orange and, and uh, The Shining. He had a sex operation in the early 70s and became Wendy Carlos. So, that's the only person I can think of back then who, who had a sex operation. So, yeah, that's basically, that's basically what it's about. And, of course, Pacino plays uh, the lead role of Sonny. And also, oh, what's his name? I'm trying to think of his partner's name, John. The actor's name's John. Oh, I forgot. Uh, oh, hang on. See, I, see, I'm a professional, and I keep fucking it up all the time. John K. Kazel, I think that's how you pronounce it. John Kazel. He's also he's also in um, the Godfather, and he's also in the Deer Hunter. Great actor. Went completely went left us too soon. He's a great actor. So yeah, just great performances, and his great performance by Pacino. You know, I mean, this this in these were the days before Pacino became. I don't know, it's like, I like Scarface, don't get me wrong, Scarface is a classic film, and he plays a, you know, he's absolutely mesmerising in the role as Tony Montana, but just completely over the top, you know, every, every role post Scarface is just completely over the top, you know, he's, sh he's shouting at the top of his lungs, he's like, give me all you got, give me all you got, you know, and he's like, you know, and she got a great ass, and you got your head all the way up it, and you think, fucking hell, I'll, 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 fucking hell, I'll calm the fuck down. It's like he's, it's like he's, he's, he's had too many lines of cocaine. You know, it's like he's complete, be, completely become Tony Montana. You know, calm the fuck down, Al. <sighs> just, you know, just a bit much, but in this. In this role, he's he's just just brilliant, you know. He's not, he's just just absolutely absolutely fantastic in it. And and he was up 
for um, Academy Award for this film, but but he lost out to Jack Nicholson. Now, can you guess the film? Can you guess the film? No. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Oh, what a fantastic film that is. Yeah, I think I should be in there because I'm a fucking nut. <laughs> I am, yeah, I'm fucking... But... Oh, you know. Nothing to be ashamed of there, Al. You lost to Jack Nicholson because Jack Nicholson, for me... His performance as Randall McMurphy, oh my, best his best performance, you know, I, I prefer that performance to The Shining, and don't get me wrong, I like him in The Shining, but it's a bit, I mean, it's a bit over the top in it, but, but, One Flew a Cool's Nest, just fantastic role, so yeah, Dog Day Afternoon, if you haven't seen it, it's really good. Great performance for Pacino, and just not much more I can say, really, you know. So, yeah, Dog Day Afternoon, classic. Next film, True Romance. True Romance, yeah, classic, classic 90s film. Wonderful, beautiful score by Hans Zimmer, just fantastic. And Christian Slater, for me, he's never been better. You know, this is my favourite role of his. You know, Patricia Arquette is very likeable. In it, she's very, you know, great performance. Dennis Hopper, brilliant in it. And, of course, Christopher Walken as the Sicilian uh, boss. Very, 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 very nasty in that. And a very, very chilly performance. So, yeah, if you haven't seen this film, basically it's two lovers on the run. And they've got the Sicilian's money. So... Brilliant, just brilliant. It's, it's more, it's more. I, I sort of compare it to um, the David Lynch film Wild, Wild at Heart, but it's more. Obviously, it's less weird and more conventional than 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 uh, Wild at Heart, because David Lynch is a bit. I don't know. He's a bit fucking cuckoo, isn't he? He's just. He's very. He's very, I don't know, it's like, I watch one of David Lynch films, it's like I've taken too many tabs of acid. You know, you're watching thinking, what the fuck am I watching? But I do like David Lynch, don't get me wrong, I mean, Wild Hearts Brilliant, and Blue, and Blue Velvet, oh, fucking hell, Dennis Hopper. With his, with his, with his gas, with his gas, we go. Don't fuck with me. Whoa! You know he's fucking. Oh, he's fucking nuts in it. I tell you, brilliant performance, and that pretty more, pretty much relaunched Dennis Hopper's career because, because after, before that, for years it, it seemed like Hollywood had blacklisted him for some reason, and of course, Blue Velvet, which was. Um, 1986, and then of course he, he relaunched his career, and and he's brilliant in this. He's only he's only in it for ten minutes. He plays uh, Christian Slater's father, and obviously, and there's one particular scene in the film uh, where the confrontation between um, Christopher Walken and Dennis Hopper just <laughs> it's got to be seen to believe it's just a incredible scene. With Dennis Hopper. So yeah, True Romance, written by Quentin Tarantino. And, and I'm surprised he didn't he didn't make this himself. But then again, I mean, who directed this? Was it Tony Scott? See, I'm I'm a fucking professional, aren't I? Oh dear me! I don't know why people watch my videos because I'm not professional at all. Ah, oh, look at me! I can't fucking get it out. Fucking gammy hands. Bloody hell. Oh, God. Doesn't want to come out. It doesn't like... Oh, even even, even Blu-ray doesn't like me. <laughs> oh, 
fucking hell. God, I've sucked my bollocks off in here. I have to turn, I'm going to turn that fire down. Because <sighs> I'm not taking my shirt off. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm not a stripper. Uh, I can't, I can't fucking get it out. I can't get this fucking thing out. It's fucking comedy gold, isn't it? Right, here we go. Oh, it's Tony Scott. Oh, fuck, I haven't even opened it. <laughs> yeah, Tony Scott. So, I mean, Tony Scott, I mean, what do you mean, great director? So, you know, you know, it's like, it's like with Natural Born Killers. Oliver Stone directed that, and it's just, you know, it's just brilliant. You can, if, you know, I'm surprised Tarantino didn't make it, but then again, Tony Tony Scott does a fantastic job, and is also, if you like The Sopranos, there's a cameo by James Gandalf, uh, Gandalf, Gandalf, I can't, Gandalfini. It's James Gandalfini. I cannot say his name. Look at my Italian. He's shit. Yeah, he he's a he, he has a cameo in it, and also Guy Oldman has a fantastic cameo in it. See, he, he's got he's got fucking he's, he's got fucking dreadlocks. He thinks he's black in it. Oh, he's fucking awesome. He said, "Hey, white boy, who are you looking at, white boy?" I'm thinking, uh, Gary, you're fucking white, mate. You're not you're not fucking Jamaican. Just just bizarre. Just really, and he also got Brad Pitt in there. He plays a stoner. He's just like, he's just like this. He's like this. <sighs> I'm just watching telly all day, dude. You know, like typical ninety slacker. You know, just just sat in his fucking shorts, just smoking weed. <sighs> oh, I don't know where they are, dude. I'm just tripping, dude. <sighs> you know? Yeah. So yeah, true romance. Definitely, you know, if you like nineties action, and if you like Quentin Tarantino, you know, when 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 Quentin Tarantino was good and decent, not like the shit he makes now. True romance is good. You'll love it. So yeah, and the next film is Blade Runner by Tony Scott's brother Ridley Scott and. Oh, what can we say about this film? Just, oh, just an absolute sci-fi masterpiece of a film. Absolute masterpiece of a film. Of course, based on Philip K. Dick's Do You Dream of Electric Sheep, which is a, which you, if you haven't read, it is a fantastic book. Philip K. Dick is a genius. He is, he's a genius, you know. He's absolute absolute genius and when I was in college uh, studying English and history the English teacher fucking hell fucking poison blonde dwarf she said to me oh I like Blade Runner but it was Philip K Dick and I went, you've got to be fucking kidding me. She's an English teacher. And she didn't know Blade Runner was based on do, do Android Dream Electric Sheep. Now, call me, I don't know, pedantic or awkward, but you'd think an English teacher would know that. Fucking idiot. What a fucking idiot. She didn't know that. That's like saying, oh, I like punk rock. But who's the Sex Pistols? Oh my God! Fuck me, you know. So yeah, yeah, that's a. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and um, and I think personally as well that um, a lot of a lot of of this film is based on Gary Newman's Replicas album. Now, if you don't know uh, Gary Newman's Replicas album, basically, Replicas is a, is a concept album where machines wear human skin. So, 
the, mach the machines in this, where human machines are called replicants. Now, in the original book, they're not called replicants, but in this, they are called replicants. So it makes me wonder: Did Ridley Scott was he influenced by Guy Newman's replicas? Because Guy Newman mentioned it in his autobiography, because he because he's he's a big fan of this film. And he was like, I wonder if they got it from my album. So, I mean, that's a question to ask Ridley Scott, isn't it? And, you know, it'd be a, be a fantastic question, wouldn't it? So, yeah, Blade Runner. Basically, he has to find Ron Batty, which, which is a replicant, and he has to retire him. And that's basically, that's basically the story. But... The special effects of fan apps just, uh, you know, before all that, before all this fucking CGI fucking bollocks, just, you know, proper special effects. And Ron Batty is a great, he's a great villain. He's heartless. He's cold. He is a machine. He has no feelings for anyone. He's just fucking horrible. And Daryl Hannah, fucking hell. Don't fuck with her, because she'll wrap, your, wrap her legs around your head. Oh, yes. So, yeah, Blade Runner. Just, just, and the, and the Frank Gellis soundtrack. Oh, fucking awesome. Fucking awesome, because, because I also, before I studied English and uh, history, I studied music first in college before he kicked me out. Yeah, I was an oi boy. And I done a version of the first first five minutes of the film, the main titles. I done a like a um, a composition to it. And and but well, the teacher loved it. He thought it was he thought it was fantastic. And I'm sure I got a copy of it somewhere. And if I do find it, I might upload it to YouTube. I might. I mean, I got, I've got loads of music pieces that are somewhere that I might upload. I mean, some of it's high, but some of it I think is shit. But you know. So yeah, Blade Runner, classic, classic sci-fi film. And if you and if you like sci-fi, I'm seeing this. You need to see it, and you need to read the book. Philip K. Dick, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Fantastic book, fantastic film. So yeah, Blade Runner. And the next films we're going to look at is The Man With No Name Trilogy. Oh, yes. Oh, I love, I love Clint Eastwood. I just, oh, just these... These are classic cowboy films. Sergio, Sergio Leone, oh, just fantastic director, and these films pretty much gave Clint his breakthrough. You know, what can we say? Great soundtrack, you know, he's just, Clint Eastwood's a fucking badass, isn't it? Lee Van Cleef in The Good, Bad and Ugly, great, great, great villain. Oh, you know, they, they, they just, they don't, they don't make cowboy films like this no more. Oh, it's just classic. And, and me and my nan, oh, she just, she loved these films. She really did. You know, <laughs> when we weren't arguing, because two Geminis together, <laughs> just <laughs> trying to make to each other, we constant arguing. But, but when we sat down and watched these, oh, it was, it was just, oh, she loved, she, she loved, she loved these films. Her favourite one was um, a few dollars more because she liked the villain in that with the, with the, with the, with the, with the wristwatch. Oh, it was like a, like a watch, isn't it? He has. Yeah, she liked, she liked, she liked particularly liked him. She said he, she said he, she said he was a good villain. He is a good villain. I, I've forgotten his name because he's in. The first one as well, he plays the villain in that as well, and he's a, oh, it's a fantastic villain. So yeah, just 
fantastic cowboy films. And he's my favourite cowboy, Clint Eastwood. I mean, I like John Wayne, but for me, Clint, Clint Eastwood is the ultimate badass cowboy. You know, he's a great... And I, I, I need to watch these. I've watched them on DVD, but I need to watch these on Blu-ray. Because they're just fantastic. So, yeah. Uh, next one is... Lost Boys. Lost Boys. Great, great, great horror film. 30 years old, this film is. 30 years old. Just, oh, it's just time flies, doesn't it, you know? And what I like about this, what I like about this film is it, it sort of modernised the vampire. Because before this, it was just like, Christopher Lee with his fangs like, but with this particular film, he sort of modernised the vampire for for the teenage audience. So you got Kiefer Sutherland, you know, with his gang, and they 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 they're young vampires. They're not ugly, decrepit, middle-aged vampires. They're young. They're young. They're wild. They like. They're like teenagers, you know? They're like, you know, they want to have a good time. They want to rebel. So that's what that's one of the things I like about it, is they modernised the vampire. You know, you, it modernised it. And and the, sound, the soundtrack is... The soundtrack's brilliant. It's very 80s. You know, it is. you, you listen to it, it's like... Oh, my God, this is so fucking 80s, but... You know, you've got that, you've got that big oily guy. Looks like to me, looks like Triple H with a fucking saxophone. And you think, man, eighties machoism. Oh, so yeah. So basically, what if you haven't seen it? Basically, what it's about? About this family move to Santa Carla, the murder capital of the world, according to the grandfather. Yes, yeah, so they move there. And Michael gets involved with Kiefer Sutherland's gang because he he has a crush on the lady vampire and basically sort of morphs into a half vampire and and basically they gotta they gotta find out who the, the leader of, of the the gang is. So I won't spoil it, but it is it is good. It is it's very it is quite funny in parts. Particularly, particularly the grand is so funny. It's like the one part he takes, wants to take Corey Hain uh, out to town in Santa Carla. And he's like, I don't want my belittle. See that? Just like a baby pussycat. Okay, let's go to town. And turns the engine off and Corey Hain's like, I thought we were going to town. Well, that's the closest I like to get to town. Well, if you've been to Newport, Grandad, fucking hell, God help you, mate. What I didn't like about Newport is all the goddamn vampires. <laughs> so, yeah, it's got some really good funny parts in it, and I like Corey Feldman. Brilliant in it, he's one of the Frog Brothers. <laughs> they, tr they, they try and be so badass, but they, they didn't, they just, they're so geeky. They're like geeky badasses, and they run and they run a comic book store, and it's like, so yeah, it's it's great, it's funny, great soundtrack, and you know it it modernised the vampire, you know, and I tell you another good film around the same time is um, is it Caf Catherine Bigelow's Near Dark? If you haven't seen that, oh. Fuck, you know, that's, a, that's another... That's, it's, near Dark is probably up here with this. It's a, re, it's a really good... That's a really good vampire film. And it's quite... It seems to be underrated. It does seem... It does seem to be underrated as a film. And I don't know why. I think it's, I think it's brilliant. It's got... Uh, Lance Herrick, Erickson in it. Bill Paxton's in it. Bill Paxton's in it. Rest in peace, sir. Great, great vampire film. So, yeah, Lost Boys is... Oh, it's brilliant, and I'm so happy to have it on Blu-ray. Just, you know, Corey Ain, rest in peace. So, yeah, Lost Boys. And the last one 
is John Carpenter's The Thing. Oh, I fucking love this film. Oh, just John Carpenter, for me, he, uh, he's in my top five. He's got to be in my top five horror directors for sure. You know, his films are incredibly atmospheric, creepy, moody. The soundtracks are haunting. And it's, a, it's just, oh my God, it's just, I don't know. I don't know anyone that doesn't like this film. I don't know anyone. Not at all. Everyone seems to regard, a lot of people regard it as, best, as his best film. Um, I would go for either Escape from New York or Assault on Precinct 13, but it is up there. It, oh, it is up there. Yeah, basically what it's about, it's about an alien that's come out of the ice. The ship is in the ice. And it can morph and imitate people or anything it touches. So... It could morph into a dog, or a cat, or 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 it's sort of it's sort of like a cat and mouse game because it's based it's based in the Antarctic and it's and you got these people I don't know whatever they do in the Antarctic I don't know apart from freeze their bollocks off doing research or whatever and and basically the first the first scene in the film is the dog running. And it's the no, and it's a helicopter and an all and it's like a Norwegians are trying to kill the dog. The dog is the alien, is the thing. And then of course it it morphs into other people and it's like a guess it's like a guess who, like who is the thing now? And it's just it's it's incredibly it's a, it's a it's a suspenseful film. It keeps you on your toes. The soundtrack's fantastic, and the effects by Albert, Albert Whitlock are fantastic. See, I always thought Stan Winston done the effects of this for some reason, but it's Albert Whitlock and his great, great, great practical effects. You know, none of that CG fucking bollocks, his proper fucking practical effects. And Kurt Russell, McCready, brilliant, brilliant as always, Kurt Russell. You know, the main, the main regular John Carpenter films, you know, he's, he's great in... Escape from New York, he's great in Big Trouble, Little China. Just one of my favourite actors. And I got to see this in in Cineworld on the 30th anniversary in 2012. And on the big screen, wow, Incre it's just incredible. It's just, just inc incredible. Really, 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 really incredible. Oh. And one, <laughs> and one of my favourite scenes of the film, which is sort of like an intentional comedy. Basically, they're all tied. They're all tied to a couch, and one of them's a thing, and they burn him. And the last guy's like, "I appreciate you've men have been through a lot, but I would rather." And when you find the time, see, I'm fucking up the lines. When you find the time. I'd rather not spend the rest of this with a tight in this fucking couch. And you think, <laughs> fair play, mate. You don't want to be tied to. You don't want to be tied to that. The rest of them into tied to that fucking couch too. You'd be freezing. You, you, your cock would be a block of ice. <laughs> so yeah, the thing. Just oh, classic, classic film, and I think it's based on a book. I'm sure it's based on a book, and and it is a remake as well. It's a remake of the night f oh, 1950s, The Thing for Another World, which I heard is not very good. But you know, the 50s, you know, it's, it's, they're not, they didn't have, they didn't quite have the the special effects then as they did in the 80s. I mean, that's when special effects came into their own, you know, particularly in horror films. Anyway, the I mean, it's like Tom Savini just. Incredible special effects for the burning and Friday the 13th. I'm not a big fan of Friday the 13th, but the special effects are probably my favourite feature of the film. So yeah, The Thing. If you haven't seen it, it's classic John Carpenter. Brilliant film. Brilliant. So yeah, 
that's all the Blu-rays. You're probably thinking, thank fuck for that. Yeah, I know, I'm fucking nuts. But it's good to be nuts. It's more fun. So yeah, that's all my Blu-ray. So yeah. Thank you for watching. And see you in the next video. Bye.